Murad Afu Aisha is the writer, director of the short live action film television. I am Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I wanted to start off by asking you, Murad, uh, why, what was so compelling about the idea of banned televisions in the Syrian sort of war or that region? Um, I mean, there are definitely certain several aspects to it, but for me personally, it was um, I the moment I saw this piece of news, I reflected on myself um, because as a child, I was really attached to TVs. I was really influenced uh, to like by TVs. Um, We didn't have internet at the time. We didn't have you know, like back in the 90s, early 90s, it was completely like TV was the only source of information. Um, and when I saw this news article um, saying that ISIS banned TVs, I just started imagining how it must be for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of children uh, in Syria and Iraq that are growing up right now with no internet and their only window to the world is this little black box like the TV. And then you're taking that away from them. Um, Yeah, it just uh, stayed with me for a while. And um, I just asked myself, would I be the same person I am today without a television? Yeah, well, uh, what, what... So what uh, what was your favorite television show growing up or your favorite or favorite thing to watch on TV? Um, surprising. I mean, we had like this antenna uh, thing going on before satellites even. And uh, there was like a second channel in Jordan where I grew up and it uh, aired um, like American films. And in the evenings, it would air like independent French films. Um, So I didn't really have much access to series and I just watched uh, a mix of independent French films and American blockbusters. (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) What do you think is the sort of, uh, sort of uh, particularly in areas where there aren't internet, the sort of power of television in terms of uh, exposing people to different perspectives and entertainment and all those sorts of things? I mean, it definitely is... um, I mean, nowadays, I feel a lot of people cannot imagine just relying on a TV as the sole source of information. But unfortunately, in, in, it's a reality in these conflict zones that a TV is really the only window for these people to the outside world. Um, and if you just imagine a small child growing up um, and not having this TV, it's just it's really mind boggling to to think their imagination of what the outside world would look like is really controlled by what this TV may or may not broadcast. So when you do not have it in the first place, um, their their thoughts about the outside world could be shaped in any way. And when ISIS is the prominent vision, they could bend your vision into whatever direction they want to. So it's really sort of, um mind washing actually if, if you if you don't have it mm. yeah like i think we we often see the perspective of how like you know tv and media can be affecting people's minds but also taking that away from people can have just yeah. as like d- sort of destructive impact what was the biggest challenge for you in putting together this film oh um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were certainly so many uh, obstacles, but I mean, at the end of the day, it is it was a student project. It was my 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 diploma project uh, mm-hmm. in my university. And uh, I think from a production point of view, pulling together an international co-production on a student level uh, to shoot in the Middle East and convince people like, oh, let's go to Jordan and shoot this film. And from a director's point of view, casting because i've never in my life worked with a seven-year-old and this was my very first experience directing a small child and finding the small child it was all um quite a journey Mm. and uh it's obviously done very well you won the gold student academy award uh for the film you would because of that you're on the oscar shortlist uh to be nominated for um uh live action short feature 
Uh, what did that sort of uh, recognition mean to you from the academy? I mean, it was beyond uh, understandable at the beginning because um, we just did the film with no expectations. I mean, and as a student, you really don't look, I mean, you hope that people would look at you, um, but since the moment we were nominated for the Student Academy till now, it feels like an absolute roller coaster, especially that we spent several months, I think around eight months after the film was done, and we were only getting rejections from festivals. And just suddenly one festival took it and was just feeling like an explosion following like with festivals and honors. Um, so it's quite amazing to be recognized by the Academy in, in particular. Mm. When you, uh, I think when you were accepting that award, you said the film was about a the vicious cycle of broken dreams and sort of um, the idea is sort of trying to break that up. What, what do you think highlighted that particularly in the film, that cycle? Uh, for me, I, it's not a specific scene. It's just the entire feeling you take away from it, you know, that this little girl's life is absolutely destroyed by a simple dream, you know, by a simple aspiration for her. And it's a very childless aspiration. And then you realize on, on what level her reality functions. Mm. Um, and I think that feeling gives you this, this, um, this, uh, yeah, it's just a feeling for, for, for this destructiveness that, uh, I mean, no child has to go through this, you know, no, no child, no adult has to go through this and, um, uh, watching TV should not be a crime in general. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Do, do you like, do you, through, through having put the film together through the responses or is that, do you see sort of hope for these broken uh, for these uh cycles of broken dreams i mean it's um i'm not a pessimist but it's absolutely like with the experiences with the people i've met uh preparing for this film and doing research about this film you realize how depressing the situation is and um even for people who lived through these situations and now are living a normal life uh, most of them do not even realize that they are traumatized uh, by such small details and, and, you know, because it becomes so insignificant because you're dealing with such other atrocities. Um, a lot of people are still traumatized by, by, by what ISIS did and by this entire ban and um, to say the least. Um, but I still hope that things would get better. I think it's really hard to fix an entire generation with broken dreams. Mm. Um, and it really breaks my heart to see what's that it's somehow repeating itself now in Afghanistan with this entire Taliban situation and this crackdown on women and children and media again. And you just see it again repeating itself in our lifetimes. And I just ask myself, um, what are we doing wrong as humans? Why is this repeating itself? Why is history repeating itself during our lifetimes? Mm. Did, you, did you go into the film with any questions that you had answered? Um, not really. I, I went in with, um, maybe I was more not understanding 100% what I was trying to achieve, I, I must say. And I went out with more understanding to, to the people who won't go through these situations. Cause I, I never in my life met a child in such an intense way. Um, and talking to psychologists and therapists made me really understand the, the toll that all of this takes on them. You know, like you always read about it in the news, you, you know, you meet some people, you talk about it, you chat, you sit in cafes, you, you know, you read the newspaper, but you really do not understand um, how, how traumatizing this is. After we casted the little girl, um, her, after a few weeks, I met with her dad and um, we did a script reading together. Um, and after I finished reading the script or even during, the father was weeping because the story was really somehow close to their experience going through ISIS territory. 
Um, and he looked at me and he said, uh, if he knew the details of the script by the time we cast it, he wouldn't have accepted that his daughter would do the film. Um, but as well, he felt um, responsible that this story and what they went through should go out to the light and people should understand what they went through. Um, so for me, it was me more understanding them, to be honest. Yeah. Um, is there a moment from the film that just sticks in your head? Oh, um, I think for me, um, the moment with the child from the window mm. and as well the very end with the father, like the, the emotional ending. I don't know if we should like <laughs> for, yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. watch the film, but um, I mean, at the end, it's quite emotional. And uh, this entire intensity of the situation um, and everything that I spoke of right now, we try to, to more or less explain in a simple scene with the father and the daughter. Um, and directing that scene was one of the most difficult things that I did as a director. Um, and as well, the scene with the little boy at the window, um, every time I watch it, it reminds me of um, the society I lived in and um, how, how this entire social construct works with men, women, um, and duties and misogyny and religion all clashing together into this small scene where a little boy in feels entitled to tell a little girl, um, like, I hope you go to hell, you bitch, um, mm -hmm. just because she was sit looking through the window. Mm. Is there some like weird sort of di dichotomy or something between sort of having told a story about such sort of harrowing um, uh, where, you know, even TVs get destroyed, people going to have TVs, and then you go on sort of the, award film circuit and festivals and all that whole sort of thing. Is that sort of a, it's sort of a very sort of surreal sort of back and forth? I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's completely weird um, because um, I mean, when you watch it, I, when I did the film, I really didn't, wasn't sure how it would be received for number one, because um I didn't know if TVs are still holding any importance for people nowadays. Mm. Uh, and seeing sort of this acceptance of what happened and people still admitting how what, what a tremendous uh, influence this TV might have on the small child um, in these festivals that are representing cinema and not TV, you know, like they're somehow yeah. a little bit different, uh, was a surprise to me because I yeah. completely did not expect um, this acceptance or like complete embrace of, of this idea. Mm. Was it like it, it, back in my dad did a couple of student films by no means on this scale or at festivals or anything like that. Just, just at college um, things can go wrong when you're doing student films and you sort of try, especially I would imagine if you're, you know, doing it internationally and all those sorts of things, what was, did anything sort of uh, go wrong when uh, making the film? Um, wrong, I wouldn't say so, to be honest, like, I've, to like the entire team that we worked on the film were completely amazing, to be honest, like the heads of departments mm -hmm. were all just wonderful. And what made our, our mission sort of um, easier uh, is with the entire crew that uh, came from Jordan, they're all more or less professional because Jordan is a crewing country for international films like US films shoot in Jordan all the time. So we actually worked with extremely high professional team. Our gaffer worked on Dune, you know, like mm. there were really big names uh, that, that um, worked on the film and they supported the film because um, we're all from Jordan and they wanted something you know like nice to come out of the country mm. do you think there's like um sort of a, a a power that like short films have um in terms of like their sort of brevity um that sort of could get lost in a in a much longer story arc or film 
Um, definitely. I really believe that. I believe short firms, I mean, you treat them completely different to feature firms, to, to long firms. Uh, they're able to tell you a story, get you to the point emotionally and um, like the exact plot and everything that the director or the writer wants you to get to in a very short time, which is absolutely um, sometimes I feel like miraculous because <laughs> you really need to design it in such a way that it, it works and functions uh, in such a short time and to get the audience there emotionally needs I feel so much work um, but it definitely um, stands out for me as in, it's a in unique art form a lot of people ask me if this film uh, I would want to make into a feature film and I always answered um, no, I, it was really designed to be a short film, you know, to get you the, to that moment, to that emotion in, in such a short time. I feel it's part of the magic of, of this film. Mm. Did, was, was there a, a, a film or something growing up that made you want to get into filmmaking? Yeah, uh, um, Billy Elliot, actually. Aha! <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, I, I remember... Um, uh, I remember uh, like on a school night, I wanted to watch it and we had it on this antenna TV. It was playing in Jordan and my parents always like you had a curfew and it was like one of the late films to be played. And uh, I snuck up uh, and brought a small little TV and uh, turned it on and I hid away from my parents in our house. <laughs> I just like watched the entire film like crouching down <laughs> you know, <laughs> with like the lowest volume in, in our storage room and um, that is one of my earliest memories of uh, wanting to watch a film uh, so badly um, because I really I just saw the trailer and I thought I could relate to that uh, little boy somewhere in, in I think Wales or somewhere in the UK um, and now as an adult, when I reflect on, on the films that I watch, I feel Billy Elliot was one of, because it changed me, you know, uh, somehow. Um, so I feel this film really sort of inspired me in an indirect way to become a filmmaker. Mm. How did uh, television change you? Ooh. Uh, I was not asked this question so far. <laughs> 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 I did a lot of interviews. This is the first. Um, how did it change me? I mean, um, other than, as I said before, uh, building this, this more profound understanding to uh, refugees and people go, going through these traumatic situations, I would say, um, I think building this personal connection to to an incredible family that went through a lot, um, I think was, a, had a very personal impact on me as a person. Um, like today, me and Aisha were like, sort of real best friends. <laughs> uh, she had to unfortunately move to Egypt, uh, but she's sort of part of the family. The entire production is really, the entire time taking care of her. Um, and I hope we sort of, left a mark on her life personally. Um, I, I know for a fact that after the production, her dad came to me and he said, Murad, she's a completely different person. Um, just because she observed heads of departments, women bossing men around, which she didn't have in her, in her bubble. And mm -hmm. now she's like this confident, opinionated young girl, which I feel extremely proud to have, to have, uh, had a part in, in, in shaping that somehow. Well, Murad, thank you so much for talking with us today. Uh, people going watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to watch other interviews and make their own awards predictions. And Murad, all the best of luck with the Academy so Award much. nominations coming out soon. It's been great <laughs> to you. chat. Thank you so much. <laughs>